In this video, we will see a small diagram, very simple, and analyze how a PFC circuit is formed, which is always inside the source. Here we have it, it is quite drawn due to the previous training, but we are going to clean our board and be able to guide ourselves with this diagram. This is a diagram of a basic circuit with passive and active PFC, typical in an inverter system. There are parts that you know very well, such as, you know, the rectifier bridge, and you also know the capacitors very well. These are the rectifier bridges, and this represents the large capacitors in an inverse circuit. What will you find here? Here you are seeing that we have this coil, this is exactly the reactor. Notice that it is placed at the output of the positive of the direct current, which is then filtered with the capacitor. The negative goes straight. In the positive channel you will also find a fifth diode. Its function is also to divide what happens here from what happens here, as it happened to detect zero crossing, but now for something different. You will have this division of the fifth diode so that what happens on this side, the voltage or wave that is on this side, be different from this side, and a computerized circuit that is this one that is here, can control and finish adjusting the power factor. Capacitors delay voltage, coils advance it, so it starts to adjust, but since an inverter system works faster or slower depending on the need, we will be using an active and computerized PFC circuit to finish adjusting the power factor and reach a power factor of 98. So if they deliver 1000 watts to me, if I were using 1000 watts, I would take advantage of 980 thanks to active PFC, how does it do it? Notice that this active PFC, that this component is inside the microprocessor, has a sample of this and a sample of this. And in turn it has a sample of this and a sample of this, obviously it has resistances because it is high voltage so it has large resistances to be able to detect a lower value but still see the wave. It has a fifth diode to divide from one side and another so it can measure zones separately and what it also has is a MOSFET, perhaps the main component of an active PFC, which is a transistor that can transport high amperage. It's like a water valve and electricity, just like a water valve and water lets electrons pass through. So what's it going to do? He's going to know if electrons are going that way or that way, and he also knows if they're going there or there because of the capacitor effect. He also knows what happens on the line. He knows if electrons go one way or another. If at any moment he detects that electrons are coming here, and from this side they are coming here, what he's going to do is, derive through the MOSFET so they go the other way. So if at any moment electrons collide he diverts them and allows them to go towards the corresponding side in the incoming voltage, thanks to that there's never that electron collision, there's never that as I told you about being in different times, and one pushing one way, and another pushing another way, it doesn't happen, or almost doesn't happen. That's how an active PFC circuit works. It's very efficient. It's great system, but it's a delicate system because this MOSFET transistor noticed that this MOSFET transistor is constantly short-circuiting. That makes this component heat up quite a bit. This diode is a diode that is transporting many electrons because after here comes the switched source and motor compressor. It supports a lot of amperage, everything heats up a lot and tends to burn out. That's why the circuit is good, but it gets damaged quite often, so we have to learn to check them. 
Now we will see all this on the electronic board, making the corresponding measurements. We will see it in the next video.